When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. And if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life, since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, and he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks Our responsorial song. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember, Remember your mercies, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. <clears throat> teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. The sins of my youth and my frailties remember not. In your kindness, remember me. Because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Remember your mercies, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete with my joy and being of the same mind with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing, do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for the others. Having, your, having you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likenesses, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, and those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Amen, I say to you, 
tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him. But tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening. Just a few announcements before we get into the uh, reflection. The first is this coming Wednesday, October the 4th, is the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. We will have a blessing of pets at 4 in the afternoon that day. So if you'd like to bring your pet by, we can bless your pet. Okay? And if you have a snake, leave him in your car. <laughs> All right. Now, also, Dr. Hannah Corley is going to offer flu shots for their flu shot clinic. That information is in the back on a handout. So if you would like to get that information, please do so to get your flu shot. And finally, as always, especially for any who are visitors, we offer communion via intention by myself. So I will be on the Blessed Mother's side with the host, which I will dip into the precious blood and offer you body and blood of Christ, which can only be received on the tongue. The Eucharistic minister will be here on the Sacred Heart side, offering you the precious body of Christ, which you can receive either on the tongue or in your hand. The choice is yours on which lines you would like to get in. Okay? Pretty simple. I wanted to take some time tonight to reflect upon first reading. It is taken from the Old Testament prophet Ezekiel. And to understand it, I'll also use last week's gospel that Deacon Bullock uh, gave his homily on to help in my explanation because Ezekiel has a dialogue between the people of Israel and God concerning that which is fair. He begins by saying that the people accuse God saying, God, you are not fair. And they, well, they technically could accuse him of that. Because we could all accuse God of not being fair. Because what does it mean to be fair? What is fair? Outside of foot-long hot dogs and Ferris wheels. What is fair? Well, fair is something that is subjective. I determine my own understanding of that which is fair. I can look around and I can say, God, in this particular situation, a child who is born already addicted to narcotics, God, that is not fair. I can look around and I can see people who are taller, God, that is not fair. Maybe I want it to be taller. I can look at others and say, well, they're smart, God. Maybe I want it to be smart. God is not fair. Because I can couch it, if you remember from the Old Testament book of Job, Job says to his wife, we accept good things from the hand of God. Should we not also accept that which is bad. And I'm paraphrasing Job, but the idea is everything we receive, good, bad, 
indifferent, comes from the hand of God, is in charge of everything. That was the Old Testament Jewish understanding. And if I applied that in that time when Ezekiel is alive, they would look around and they would see, well, God, our nation, Israel, we've had to suffer. You're not fair. Yes. Yes. God is not fair by my understanding of what is fair. Because if you notice, whenever we deem something unfair, it usually means, how does it affect us? What is fair to me may not necessarily be fair to you. Because, to be honest with you, when the person says, well, it's unfair, they don't care. They truly do not care how fairness applies to you. Fairness is about me and how I define it. But Ezekiel uses God's words and God says, oh, I'm not fair. Rather, you, Israel, are not fair. What God is really turning the tables on them is saying, no, it's not about fairness. It's about justice. Do you remember there are four cardinal virtues? One of the four is justice. Justice. What is justice? Or, properly, what does it mean to be just? To be just is to give to the other what is their just due. What do you justly deserve? Is God just? Almost perfectly God is just. Justice is objective. But again, for our understanding of justice, we must make it subjective. We define God's justice by our own understanding of what is just and what is unjust. And in fact, we'll probably say, well, God is not just. Why? Because I have experienced injustice or I've witnessed injustice. Israel could have said that at that time period. But is God truly just? Yes. Am I? Just no, no, because if you take that parable from last Sunday, and this is why I think it's very appropriate. Remember, we spoke of the landowner who pays the serve the wages of the people who come to work. Let's say, for instance, someone comes in. Early in the morning, they work a full eight hours, and the last person comes and they work one hour. And as the deacon was giving that homily, in my mind, I don't know how you operate, but in my mind, I was remembering back when I used to work. <laughs> when I used to work, before I became a priest, and don't work now. But, you know, when I, when I had out of high school and college doing you know, the things that high schoolers and collegians do for work. Uh, <clears throat> did I care what the other person around me was getting? No, to be honest with you, I wasn't. Why? Because I was too busy making sure that I paid for my apartment that I was staying at, made sure I had food on my table. I could care less what someone else was doing. And Deacon had said, well, what if you knew their story? Again, 20-year-old Sochet, you could have told him, well, that person had to walk with a gift leg uphill in waist-deep snow two miles just to get to work. And I'm going to go, and? <laughs> it's not my issue. Not my problem. What's the saying? Not my circus, not my monkeys. Okay? I don't care. I'm just solely focused on social. I want to make sure I do and get my stuff. 
And I've always struggled with that gospel passage because if the landowner is God, how does he handle things? You remember the guy who's working eight hours, he's probably hot, he's tired, it's the end of the day. I know thinking of it as myself and the deacon was talking, I'd have been ready to just go get my check and I'm gone. I'm out the door working. But the landowner, he said he brings him in front and pays the guy who worked the one hour right in front of the guy who worked the eight hours. And I thought to myself, that would really annoy the bejesus out of me. And I'm saying that nicely. Yeah, it says they grumbled. I would have grumbled. Why? Don't do it right in front of my face. I mean, if you want to do it, do it behind my back. I don't care. Don't pay him right in front of my face. That would annoy me. I would grumble. Then the landowner says, well, my friend, oh, you know, I'm allowed to be generous with my money. Yeah, shut up. You know what? I tell you, come tomorrow, you come working, looking for work at 5 a.m., I ain't going to work for you. Now, the guy who worked one hour, he's going to be loyal to you for one day. But me, 20-year-old me, uh -uh. I ain't about to give myself, extend my energy for that. No, 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 no. Don't do it in front of my face. But then it hit me. Boom. Like a light. What if I, speaking of fairness and justice, what if I turned it? What if I reverse the characters? Instead of God being the landowner and I the worker, because again, that's too subjective. I'm placing my understanding of fairness and justice upon God. What if I switch it and say, I am the landowner. God is the worker. And I retold the story. What if God is that worker who shows up to work in the field of my life at the first dawn of my life when I take that first breath? And if you ever notice throughout our lives, so often we flitter about looking for something new and exciting. Like that landowner, we keep going back, finding something new and bringing it back. I mean, my gosh, certain people say, you know, when the new iPhone comes out, they even have plans so that when the new thing comes out, they immediately get the new thing. Then there's others who still got iPhone like six or three or four, you know? Why? Because they don't need that. But if you think about us in life, as we have all grown older, were we not like that? Were we not having to flitter about, always looking for something? Some people look for something new, something to entertain us. We're the landowner. And at the end of the day, would that be at the end of a day, or at the end of our life, the big day? We bring God and we stand in front and we bring all these other things that have entertained us, that we've sought out throughout our life. And we say to God, you know, uh, we're going to pay them the same amount and affection with our heart that we pay you. Although you have been there since day one, yeah, I'm going to give these other things which I continue to go out and find new all the time. I'm going to give them the same pay I give you. See, that's where real justice is because you know what God does if we did that to God? Would he act as 20-year-old me would act? No. No, he wouldn't. Because the next day at 5 a.m., God would be back in the field of my life getting ready to work. No matter how unjust or unfair I treat God, God never ever gives me what is my just due. God's mercy always triumphs over his justice. 
if God gave you and I what we justly deserved, who could stand in his presence today? No. He mercifully treats us better than we ever deserved. <clears throat> So the next time we're tempted to look at God and say, God, why did you turn it around? Turn it around. God, how many times have I? Examine it that way. And then thank him that no matter what happens, he's always been there. He always will be there. Unlike the other things that come into our life, in and out, in and out, God is consistent. Why? Because he loves us. We're his children. The Almighty God be with you, may he bless you. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy with the people entrusted to their charge. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who hold public office and those who assist them in promoting the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who travel by sea, land, or air, for captives and all held in prison. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered in this sacred place by faith and devotion and by love and reverence for God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our community, both here present and those watching on video, who are suffering, whether from physical, emotional, or mental illnesses, that they may be comforted by the resurrected Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear and for all the prayers that we hold deep in the silence of our hearts. For all of our intercessions spoken and unspoken, joined to the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and let us pray this night that we will continue to be open to the inspiration and guidance of the Holy Spirit as we as a parish family try to grow in our love of God and of his blessed mother. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude by asking Mary, the mother of God's intercessions, as we pray. Help Mary, O Christ, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. With your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you. Through the body and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word to be made on things to be sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining through all the people he stretched out his hands to endure his passion, thus break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. <laughs> Oh, 
like to be called, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he went willingly into his passion. He took bread out of it, giving thanks for it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the trellis. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body. There we may be co heirs of glory with Christ. In his suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death. We live to reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen. Would you be my